Hello friends, I am Dr. Ajay Adam. So today we will be discussing inhalational agents. And inhalational agents you all know, they are mainly used for maintenance of anesthesia. So they are mainly used for maintenance of anesthesia. So uh, broadly, you can classify them as agents Uh, in current use agents in current use and you can say agents no more used agents in current use Further, you can classify them as gaseous agents and volatile agents. So, gaseous agents in current use is only nitrous oxide. Xenon is not yet available for free use. It is under studies. Among the volatile agents, four agents which we are using are halothane, isoflurane, Cufluorine and desflurane. So these are the four agents which we are using in current practice. And among the agents which are no more used, definitely no need to go in details. Only that we are going to discuss little bit about ether. Other agents are obviously obsolete, so no need to waste uh, time or energy on those agents. So there are many properties of inhalation agent, but two most important that you should know one among those is potency and potency you know is directly proportional to lipid solubility of course if our agent is more lipid soluble it will be more potent because you know that our brain is made up of lipids so if agent is more lipid soluble it will be more potent but the indicator of potency is mac that is minimum alveolar concentration mac which is the minimum concentration required to produce immobility in 50% of the subjects given painful stimulus. So if you are checking in human beings, then skin incision is considered as a painful stimulus. If you are checking in rats or guinea pigs, then tail clamping is considered as a painful stimulus. So it is a minimum concentration which is required to produce immobility in 50% of the subject who have been given painful stimulus. Now, if I ask you if an agent has less MAC, it will be more potent or less potent? Of course, more potent. Say for example, I have two agents, agent A and agent B. Agent A say is producing X effect at a concentration of 1% while agent B is producing same effect at a concentration of 2%. So which will be more potent? Of course A because A is producing the same effect at 1% which B is producing at 2%. So A definitely is more potent than B. Means you can say that MAC is inversely proportional to potency or potency is inversely proportional to MAC. Means lesser the MAC, more will be the potency. So this is the MAC of different agents. Of course, no need to remember at all but just to make you understand, just you can understand one thing. MAC methoxyfluorine is producing immobility in 50% of the subjects at a concentration of 0.16%. While on the other hand, say desflurane is producing same effect in 50% patients at a concentration of 6%. Means which is more potent? Of course, methoxyfluorine if I compare between these two. So, of course, you need not remember 
uh, mac of these agents yes but you have to know the most potent and least potent agents that's it otherwise for you no need to remember table at all and no need to remember values of mac at all but yes most potent and least potent they often ask and that you have to know so most potent now if i say overall overall most potent is methoxyfluorine you can say this among all it has got the lowest mac so it will be the most potent however we have seen that methoxyfluorine is not among the list of the agents which we are using currently so of so don't uh, uh, there is no need to remember about methoxyfluorine by chance if they give choices methoxyfluorine then you will be choosing methoxyfluorine but i doubt that uh, nowadays in current day uh, exams you get choices from the agents which are obsolete so forget about methoxyfluorine so among the agents of the current use the most potent is halothane you can see it has got the lowest mac mac among the agents of the current use fine now regarding least potent again they may ask you two ways if they ask you least potent inhalational least potent inhalational then it is nitrous oxide but nitrous oxide is a gas and majority of the authors they classify gaseous agent different from volatile agent so most potent or least potent overall inhalation agent is nitrous oxide but if i say you least potent volatile agents then it is desflurane 6% least potent overall is nitrous oxide 104% not but nitrous oxide is gas so cannot be compared with volatile agent however i have seen questions where they have asked just least potent inhalational agent uh, and including gas and volatile agent if that is a scenario then of course it will be nitrous oxide but if they ask you least potent volatile agent then it will be desflurane but most potent is halothane fine now second property i told you other than potency that you have to know about inhalational agents is the blood gas partition coefficient which is also called as blood gas solubility blood gas solubility although it's little difficult to understand if you really go by real approach but i'll tell you very simple method to understand it it's an indicator of induction and recovery so blood gas coefficient is the indicator of induction and recovery so imagine if a agent is less soluble in blood it will be easy for brain to extract it from blood so induction will be faster means if a agent has less blood gas solubility its induction and recovery will be fast so simply you can say that blood gas solubility is also inversely proportional to uh, induction and recovery so inversely proportional to induction and recovery means le simple lesser the blood gas solubility you can simply understand this way i told you lesser the blood solubility easy for the brain to extract it from blood so induction and recovery will be fast fine so again these are the blood gas solubility of different agents but no need to remember the values at all just like potency we have to understand that which has the fastest induction and which has the slowest induction 
So now again, if I compare between say two agents, one agent say is methoxyfluorine, where blood gas coefficient is 15. Another agent is xenone, with blood gas coefficient is 0.14. So which will have fast induction? Xenone. So many times faster induction than methoxyfluorine. So just simply you can remember, fastest induction, again, overall, is with xenone but xenone I told you is not yet available for clinical use it is still under clinical trial so among the agents of the current use fastest induction and recovery seen with desflurane so among the agents of the current use fastest induction and recovery seen with desflurane now again, slowest induction and recovery you can see is seen with methoxyfluorine, but we won't discuss methoxyfluorine which because it's obsolete. So among the agents of the current use, slowest induction and slowest recovery is seen with halogen. So among the agents of the current use, slowest induction and slowest recovery is seen with halogen. So to rapidly summarize, Overall, fastest induction and fastest recovery seen with xenon, but xenon is not yet available for clinical use. So, among the agents of the current use, fastest induction and fastest recovery seen with desflurane, while slowest induction and slowest recovery seen with halogen. Fine. Now, let's see the systemic effects of inhalation agents. First, let's start with respiratory system. Again, their effect in respiratory system is uh, multifold, but definitely you need not go in details at all. You simply remember that all inhalational agents of the current use, they inhibit respiration. So there occur inhibition of respiration, or you can say, they depresses respiration. So all the agents of the current use, they inhibit respiration. Then on bronchial muscles, on bronchial muscles, MAC, they all causes bronchi dilatation. So they all causes bronchodilatation, maximum bronchodilatation is seen with CO fluorine. So maximum bronchodilatation is seen with CO fluorine. So they all causes bronchodilatation, maximum is with CO fluorine. Then effect on cardiovascular system, again uh, they have multiple fold effect on cardiovascular system. But again, no need to go in details. You can simply remember they all decreases the cardiac output. So all inhalation agents, they decreases the cardiac output. Minimum decrease. Minimum. Minimum decrease in cardiac output is seen with isofluorine. So all decreases the cardiac output, minimum decrease in cardiac output is seen with isofluorine. On CNS, on CNS you can just remember one effect, again no need to go in details, that all inhalational agents, they increases the intracranial tension, ICT. So all inhalation agent, they increases ICT, minimum increase, minimum increase in ICT is seen with CO fluorine. So minimum increase in ICT is seen with CO fluorine. And of course, these properties will help you uh, deciding the agent for different uh, 
medical diseases that we'll discuss later. Now effect on liver. Among the agents which are in current day practice, hepatotoxicity has been reported only with halothane. Among the agents of the current used, hepatotoxicity has been reported with halothane only and why halothane causes hepatotoxicity that we will discuss later. Then another important effect on liver that you should know is that all inhalational agents, they decrease the hepatic blood flow. Hepatic blood flow. So all inhalational agents, they decrease the hepatic blood flow. Now minimum decrease in hepatic blood flow is caused by sevoflurane. So minimum decrease in hepatic blood flow is seen with sevoflurane. Renal, they can cause nephrotoxicity. And why they cause nephrotoxicity? Because they produce fluoride. Because of the fluoride, inhalation agents are fluorinated. And because of the fluoride, they can cause nephrotoxicity. Now, among the agents of the current use, you can say maximum fluoride is seen with sevoflurane. So among the agents of current use, maximum fluoride is seen with sevoflurane and minimum fluoride is produced with desflurane. So among the agents of the current use, maximum fluoride, sevoflurane, while minimal fluoride is desflurane. So, uh, these are some of the very important properties. Of course, may be a little difficult to remember right now, but when we'll discuss individual agents, you will be better able to understand and remember. Regarding metabolism, just two things you can remember is that nitrous oxide is not at all metabolized in human body. So nitrous oxide does not undergo any metabolism in human body. So it get eliminated unchanged through body while desflurane is also negligibly metabolized. And in fact, this is the region that desflurane produces minimal or in fact, I won't mind saying no fluoride. At clinically used concentration, in fact, no fluoride. And obviously fluoride will be produced if there is metabolism. So desflurane is negligibly metabolized means less than 0.1% which is almost you can say nil metabolism. So because of its negligible metabolism, desflurane does not produce fluoride. And what I am all telling all these things are important from clinical point of view that we will discuss later. So nitrous oxide not at all metabolized in human body while desflurane is also negligibly metabolized. Nitrous oxide, now coming to individual agents, nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, you know, is also called as laughing gas. However, it has nothing to do with any of the properties of nitrous oxide. It's not that somebody is crying, you start giving nitrous oxide, he'll start laughing. No, he may cry more. So, laughing gas name was given by some physicist. Actually, he was a physicist, Humphrey Davy. So he was a chronic sufferer of headache, backache and toothache. So accidentally during his experiment, he used to inhale nitrous oxide. And his pain got so relieved, he became so happy that he started to call it as laughing gas. So it has nothing to do with any property of nitrous oxide. This you can say is just a historical name. And this thing already I have told you that nitrous oxide is not at all metabolized in human body. It does not undergo any metabolism in human body. Then it is 35 times more soluble than nitrogen. This is a very important property of nitrous oxide. 
that is 35 times more soluble than nitrogen and the clinical significance of this property we are just going to discuss now if we see the anesthetic properties mac 104 percent making it as least potent inhalational agent it cannot act as a complete anesthetic because to act as a complete anesthetic, it has to be given above its concentration. MAC, MAC is already 104% and you all know that maximum nitrous oxide that we can give is 75% because 25% mandatory oxygen is must. Minimum oxygen in anesthesia has to be at least 25% means maximum nitrous oxide that we can give is 75%. So it cannot act as a complete anesthetic. However, it will act as a carrier to carry other volatile agent, other inhalation agent. Then another good property is that it's a good analgesic. It's a good analgesic. So it will decrease the requirement of analgesics. It will decrease the requirement of analgesics side effect expansion of air spaces now look at this property i told you it is 35 times more soluble than nitrogen what does that mean that means for one mole of nitrogen removed will be replaced with 35 molecules of nitrous oxide So what I was telling you is that for 35 times more soluble than nitrogen means for one mole of nitrogen removed will be replaced with 35 molecules of nitrous oxide. Now imagine if there is any air in a closed space like patient is suffering from say pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum or pneumoencephalum. So for one mole of nitrogen removed if getting replaced with 35 molecules of nitrous oxide imagine how fast a small pneumothorax will become tension pneumothorax the volume of pneumothorax can become double in 10 minutes or triple in 20 minutes so therefore if there is any air in any of a closed space the use of nitrous oxide become absolutely absolutely contraindicated so if there is a pneumothorax or pneumopericardium or pneumoencephalum means air in brain or pneumomediastinum air in mediastinal space the use of nitrous oxide is absolutely absolutely contraindicated so any air in a closed space in body is an absolute contraindication for using nitrous oxide. So that, that's why I was telling this property 35 times more soluble than nitrogen is very very important from clinical point of view. Using nitrous oxide in these conditions pneumothorax, pneumopericardium, pneumoencephalum, pneumodiastinum can turn out to be a lethal event. I should have written it here in fact. So that is why now you can understand that it causes expansion of air spaces and that is why <coughs> it is contraindicated for all these conditions that we discussed. Right. Then on prolonged use it may cause subacute degeneration of spinal cord 
but this is only seen in prolonged use so it will not be seen in patients it will be only seen in industrial workers who have been chronically exposed to nitrous oxide uh, <clears throat> so it will not be seen in patients then yes this is another important property of nitrous oxide for which people actually are not preferring nitrous oxide nowadays that it is responsible for global warming ozone depletion and that is why you know many people instead of nitrous oxide are using air so ozone depletion is one of a very important or you can say environmental hazard is one of a very important factor for which people have stopped using or start avoiding nitrous oxide and you know that nowadays there is so much hue and cry about global warming considering all these side effects of uh, nitrous oxide now their interest in xenon has again been renewed although the anesthetic properties of xenon were studied in 1956 but that time the cost of manufacturing of xenon came out to be very high it is almost you can say 350 times more expensive than nitrous oxide but now uh, uh they are believing that they will be able to synthesize xenon at lower cost so their interest in xenon has again been renewed because the advantages of xenon if you see are enormous over nitrous oxide all those side effects that we discussed with nitrous oxide like expansion of cavities or your uh, subacute degenerative spinal cord or ozone depletion all these effects side effects are not seen with xenon then in it supersedes in anesthetic properties its mac is 70% means it can be used as a sole agent nitrous oxide i told you we can't use because mac is already 104% while xenon we can use as a sole agent because its mac is 70% and it is as good analgesic as nitrous oxide so you can say it's better uh, than nitrous oxide even in its anesthetic properties and if you remember blood gas coefficient overall blood gas coefficient is lowest so induction and recovery will also be faster so you can say it supersedes in anesthetic properties over nitrous oxide then it's an inert gas inert gas means no systemic side effects inert gas means there should not be any systemic side effects either then it does not support fire nitrous oxide you know the formula n2o means there is oxygen molecule so it can support fire while xenon doesn't have any oxygen molecule so xenon will not even support fire nitrous oxide as such is not inflammable but it can support fire because it has it has oxygen molecule so xenon will not even support fire so you can say the only limiting factor even today for not using xenon is its cost very expensive that's the only limiting factor one you can say a clinical limiting factor if uh, we say that it can increase airway resistance why because its density is uh, more if you consider density of air as one the density of xenon is almost 5.8 so it almost six times heavier than air and heavier the gas more will be the resistance so increase air resistance means you can say right now we can say avoid in asthma patients avoid in asthma patients so that is only you can say clinical limitation otherwise you can say the only limitation for not using xenon is still its cost and really if it comes out to be cheaper in future then definitely xenon may replace nitrous oxide from its uh, uh, <coughs> you can say use now let's see the volatile agent after gaseous agent volatile agent halothen so halothen nowadays actually in india is still it is used but west uh it is almost not used but india still halothen is used <clears throat> so if we see the physical property it's non irritant 
this is the physical properties it's non irritant then we see the anesthetic properties mag 0.74 what does that mean that among the agents of the current use it is most potent that we have discussed before blood gas coefficient 2.4 what does that mean that induction and recovery and recovery is slowest among the agents of the current use so hello the most potent among the agent of the current use and have slowest induction and slowest recovery both thing we have discussed before then metabolism halothane is actually significantly metabolized and one of the major metabolite of halothane is trifluoroacetic acid trifluoroacetic acid is the major metabolite of halothane and uh, uh, <coughs> it has got very important clinical relevance so trifluoroacetic acid has got very important clinical relevance and the clinical relevance of that we are just going to discuss systemic effects on cardiovascular system these effects which i am going to discuss here are additional to the effects that we have discussed in journal and in journal if you remember what is the effect of inhalation agents on uh, cardiac output decrease cardiac output so of course halothane will also decrease the cardiac output in addition to that one unique effect of halothane is that it sensitizes myocardium to catecholamines it sensitizes myocardium to catecholamines so what is the clinical relevance of this two clinical relevance sometimes you would have seen that there are many surgeons who are fond of infiltrating too much of the adrenaline so if they are infiltrating too much of the adrenaline and you are using halothane patient become at very high risk of arrhythmia so either you have to stop adrenaline or you have to stop surgeon so one thing has to be stop and second is that uh, <coughs> the use of halothane will be absolutely contraindicated in pheochromocytoma it is absolutely contraindicated in pheochromocytoma because pheochromocytoma surgeries you know that there occur manipulation of uh, uh, adrenal that time there may occur gush of catecholamines and if you are using halothane at that time that may turn out to be a lethal event so it's absolutely contraindicated in pheochromocytoma surgeries respiratory system nowadays it is not preferred for asthmatics and why i kept it red and why i say it is important because maybe all your mcq books you will see it is given that halothane being the inhalational agent of choice for asthma patients but that was a matter of past in fact nowadays they say that halothane should be avoided for asthma patients if they are on beta blockers and many of the asthma patients you they know they are on beta blockers and halothane sensitize myocardium to catecholamines means in asthma patients rather there is increased risk of arrhythmias so therefore halothane should actually be avoided for asthma patients liver halothane hepatitis is a very well known entity that we must know that halothane causes hepatitis and uh, uh why halothane causes hepatitis there were a lot of theory and speculations which were going on but now it is proven beyond any second thought that this halothane hepatitis has got auto immune basis auto immune basis means the metabolic product of halothane i told you is trifluoroacetic acid the metabolic product of halothane is trifluoroacetic acid one of the major metabolite i told you if you remember major metabolite is trifluoroacetic acid and this trifluoroacetic acid is actually antigen 
is antigenic so it will lead to production of antibodies so leading to antigen antibody mediated hepatitis so this hepatitis is autoimmune trifluoroacetic acid is antigenic leads to production of antibodies leading to antigen antibody mediated hepatitis isoflurane isoflurane chemically is a derivative of ether and ether you know is known for its irritating induction so you can say induction of isoflurane is irritating so induction of halothane we have seen is smooth while the induction of isoflurane is irritating because it's directly derived from ether and ether you know is very well known for its irritating induction now if you remember on cardiovascular system uh, i told you that all inhalation agent that decreases cardiac output but minimum decrease in cardiac output is seen with isoflurane making it as an agent of choice for cardiac patient so it's the agent of choice for cardiac patient because it causes minimum decrease in cardiac output so don't think that isoflurane does not decrease the cardiac output it also decreases the cardiac output but less as compared to other agents making it as a inhalational agent of choice for all cardiac patients desflurane desflurane chemically is an isomer of isoflurane isomer of isoflurane means induction of desflurane will also be irritating so induction of desflurane will also be irritating if you see the physical properties desflurane has got very high vapor pressure and low boiling point just no need to remember properties no may not be that important from your point of view that it has got a very high vapor pressure and low boiling point low boiling point means it may start even boiling at room temperature if it is given through ordinary vaporizer so therefore a special vaporizer is used for the delivery of uh desflurane that is called as tex6 so tex6 is a special vaporizer which is used for the delivery of desflurane that's a special vaporizer and desflurane with desiccated soda lime desiccated means dry soda lime and soda lime you know we are using with closed circuit to absorb carbon dioxide so if that soda lime become extremely dry or you can say desiccated then it can produce carbon monoxide so desiccated soda lime may produce carbon monoxide with desflurane anesthetic properties if we see if you remember we discuss that mac is high mac is high means it is least potent volatile agent so least potent overall inhalation agent i told you was nitrous oxide but nitrous oxide is a gas so least potent volatile agent is desflurane and it is among the agents of the current use it has got lowest blood gas solubility so among the agents of the current use it has got lowest blood gas solubility metabolism 
it is negligibly metabolized i told you very minimally metabolized negligibly metabolized metabolism may be less than 0.1% and because of its negligible metabolism it does not produce fluoride no fluoride so no fluoride making it as a inhalational agent of choice for renal patients what fluoride causes nephrotoxicity so no fluoride making it as a inhalational agent of choice for renal patients and because it is minimally metabolized making it as a inhalational agent of choice for long duration surgeries because even if surgery lasts say 6 hours or 8 hours there is no risk of accumulation of any toxic metabolite because it is negligibly metabolized systemic effects of desflurane are very interesting less than 6% its mac we have seen is 6% or simply you can say at 1 mac or less than 1 mac or you can say more than 1 mac less than 1 mac it exactly behaves like isoflurane because it's an isomer of isoflurane so it's an isomer of isoflurane so of course it will be exactly behaving like isoflurane but at concentration more than 1 mac it stimulate sympathetic system at concentration more than 1 mac it is stimulates sympathetic system stimulation of sympathetic system means it will cause hypertension and tachycardia making it as inhalational agent of choice for shock so shock what we want hypertension so increase in sympathetic stimulation will increase blood pressure making it as an inhalational agent of choice for shock so interestingly less than 6% it behaves like sim simply like isoflurane and more than 6% it stimulates sympathetic system making it as an inhalational agent of choice for shock sevoflurane sevoflurane is the agent of choice for pediatric induction because it has got smoothest induction among inhalational agents it has got smoothest induction so making it as a inhalational agent of choice for induction in pediatric if sevoflurane not available then second choice will be halothane can we use desflurane and isoflurane for induction never because they are they are irritating desflurane irritating isoflurane irritating so desflurane and isoflurane can't be used for induction so desflurane and isoflurane cannot be used for induction so first choice for induction in pediatric patients is sevoflurane sevoflurane if sevo not available then second choice is halothane and that's it and why I'm little insisting this because you will find uh, even difficult questions on this. Then it is sevoflurane is the inhalation agent of choice for hepatic patients. Why? Because I told you it causes minimum decrease in hepatic blood flow. It causes minimum decrease in hepatic blood flow, making it as an inhalation agent of choice for hepatic patients. 
then it is also the inhalational agent of choice for neurosurgery because it causes minimum increase in ICT. It causes minimum increase in ICT. Then it is also the inhalational agent of choice for asthmatic because it causes maximum bronchodilatation. So, sevoflurane, to rapidly summarize, is the inhalational agent of choice for pediatric induction, inhalational agent of choice for hepatic patient because it causes minimum decrease in hepatic blood flow, inhalational agent of choice for neurosurgery because it causes minimum increase in ICT, and inhalational agent of choice for asthma patients because it causes maximum bronchodilatation. Then disadvantages by reacting with soda lime, by reacting with soda lime, it can produce a toxic compound called as compound A. So by reacting with soda lime, it can produce compound A, which actually is a nephrotoxic agent. However, the production of compound A is more or less theoretical. It's not actually doesn't produce so much compound A. So the production of compound A is more or less theoretical. But yes, it can produce compound A with soda lime. Then, if the soda lime is desiccated, dry, it may cause burns of respiratory tract. So with the desiccated soda lime, it can cause burns of respiratory tract. So desiccated soda lime is really dangerous. We have seen that this desiccated soda lime with the desflurane could have produced carbon monoxide and this desiccated soda lime with sevoflurane can cause burns of respiratory tract. So soda lime becoming desiccated is really a dangerous complication but fortunately you know that soda lime become desiccated is very rare. Why? Because when carbon dioxide react with soda lime water is produced. So humidity of the gases is automatically preserved. Then if you remember I told you it produces high fluoride. Among the agents of the current use I told you maximum fluoride is produced with sevoflurane. This we discussed if you remember. Maximum fluoride. No fluoride with desflurane, while maximum fluoride with sevoflurane. So among the agents of current use, you can say maximum fluoride is seen with sevoflurane. So obviously, it should be avoided for renal patients. Then there has been case reports of convulsions, although these convulsions were rarely reported, and that's true only in pediatric patients where we are using it for induction in high doses but yes there has been case reports of convulsions now one question that should come to your mind is on one hand i said it causes convulsions and on the second hand i said it is the inhalation agent of choice for neurosurgery yes it is because i told you that convulsions are very very rare only few case reports of convulsion and that too only in pediatric patients where we are using high concentrations for induction otherwise not. So it can be safely used in neurosurgical patients. Now <clears throat> among the agents which are not used, I told you among those agents which are not used nowadays I will just discuss ether because ether is still I will say is the unique agent uh, which as really has got unique properties. So what are the advantages or the good properties of ether? It was very cheap. In fact, cheapest. If I tell you the cost, one bottle of ether may today even you cost you 700 or 800 rupees. While the same bottle of halothane, one liter will cost you around 3000 rupees. 
isoflurane around 10 to 15,000 rupees, sevoflurane around 35,000 rupees, and desflurane effective cost comes out to be around 1 lakh rupees. So that's the difference in cost, cheapest. Then it used to be the safest inhalation agent, safest inhalation agent, and then it used. It was the only inhalational agent which was actually complete. So till date we have been only able to synthesize one complete anesthetic and that is ether. And it can be given by open drop method. Open means you directly put a layer of gauze piece and pour ether direct, uh, directly over gauze pieces. So it can be given by open drop method. So it can be used for remote location. So still you can use uh, ether without the availability of any equipment can be used at remote locations. But in spite of such nice properties, very cheap, safe, complete, suitable for remote locations, you can use it even without an anesthesia machine. But in spite of these two best properties, ether stand in the list of obsolete agents because of two reasons. One highly inflammable and explosive. So highly inflammable and highly explosive and secondly induction and recovery are highly irritating very irritating very irritating horribly irritating so highly inflammable highly explosive and highly irritating induction and recovery led to the obsolescence of uh, ether from practice now combination of gases heliox heliox is a mixture of helium plus oxygen as the name suggests helium helium and oxygen heliox h e l i helium o x is oxygen heliox a mixture of helium and oxygen and you know that the density of helium is very low if you consider density of air as 1 the density of helium is just 0.14 low and because of the low density it is very useful for upper airway obstruction because if density is low and you mix it with oxygen so even if there is upper airway obstruction like tracheal stenosis or bronchial stenosis this combination will be able to pass through stenosis because the density is low and if the density is low obviously the resistance will be low so this gas will be able to pass even through a narrow orifice so making it very useful for upper airway obstruction then one more <coughs> combination which is used is Antonox. Antonox, which is a mixture of 50% oxygen and 50% nitrous oxide. So Antonox, <coughs> which is a mixture of 50% oxygen and 50% nitrous oxide, and it is used for labor analgesia. Labor analgesia, or you can say painless labor. So it is used for painless labor or you can say labor analgesia. That's the only use of Antonox. And why? Because you know nitrous oxide I told you is analgesic. Now let's discuss a few of the MCQs. Question number one. Best indicator for potency of inhalation agents. MAC, lipid solubility, blood gas coefficient, none of the above. Obviously minimum alveolar concentration. Most potent anesthetic, isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane, halothane. Of course, among the agents of the current use, most potent is halothane. Fastest recovery will be seen with cyclopropane, desflurane, halothane, isoflurane. Fastest recovery will be seen with desflurane because it has got lowest blood gas coefficient. Agent of choice for asthmatics, sevoflurane. Halothane, isoflurane, ether, 
For asthmatics, I told you sevoflurane because it causes maximum bronchodilatation. Contraindicated in pneumothorax, oxygen, nitrous oxide, desflurane, isoflurane, nitrous oxide. Why? Because it is 35 times more soluble than nitrogen. Coronary still is seen with halothane, isoflurane, desflurane, none of the above. Yes, that's an interesting thing. I should have mentioned you there that here and then only. Isoflurane actually were used to be considered as agent of choice for all cardiac patients except, except MI. Why? Because they were believing that isoflurane causes uh, coronary steel. But now the recent test studies have proven that isoflurane also does not cause coronary steel. So no coronary steel. So can be used even for cardiac patients. So now isoflurane can be used even for uh, MI patients because it does not produce coronary steel. So none of the above. Agent of choice for neurosurgery, isoflurane, halothane, ether, nitrous oxide. Among these isoflurane, However, best is sevoflurane, but sevoflurane is not given in choice, so isoflurane. And, and why I specifically put this question? Because you will find this question in your MCQ books also, where inhalation agent of choice mentioned is neurosurgery is isoflurane. That is true. But say here, in the same question, say I instead of ether, I am also putting sevoflurane. And then the question comes, where ISO and CO both are given, then the option will become C. And why again I told you, I, two important things in your books you will see. Inhalation agent of choice for asthma mentioned is halothane, but I told you that's an old thing. Now CO fluorine. Similarly in books you will see inhalation agent of choice for neurosurgery mentioned is ISO fluorine, but again that's past. In current day practice, inhalation agent of choice choice for neurosurgery is COFLURIN. All of the following liberate fluoride on metabolism except halothane, isoflurin, desflurin, COFLURIN. Desflurin I told you does not cause any fluoride. Hepatitis is caused by halothane, desflurin, COFLURIN, isoflurin, halothane because of immunology, because of trifluoroacetic acid. Desiccated soda lime can produce carbon monoxide with halothane, sevoflurane, desflurane, triline, carbon monoxide with desflurane. Inhalation agent causing seizures, isoflurane, sevoflurane, desflurane, halothane, sevoflurane. I told you incidence is all the very rare. Inhalation agent of choice for hepatic failure, isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane, halothane. For hepatic failure, Sevoflurane because minimum decrease in hepatic blood flow. Inhalation agent contraindicated in pheochromocytoma. Isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane, halothane. Halothane because it sensitizes myocardium to catecholamines. All of the following undergo metabolism except nitrous oxide, halothane, ether, cyclopropane, nitrous oxide. No metabolism at all. Halothane hepatitis is because of immunologic mechanism. Decrease hepatic blood flow, direct toxicity, decrease portal blood flow, immunology mechanism. All are true of induction except pleasant, slow, increased secretions, irritating. It's highly unpleasant, highly irritating. Highly explosive agent, ether, isoflurane, halothane, none of the above. Ether, I told you, is highly inflammable and highly explosive. Highest post osmotic is seen with ether, isoflurane, halothane, desflurane, ether. Highly irritating uh, induction and recovery and the incidence of nausea vomiting is almost you can say 100%. Retrolental fibroplasia is seen in excess of oxygen, carbon dioxide, natural helium. This you should know. 
although that's not my part i covered through but you should know yes in toxicity of oxygen and that's to mainly in prematures carbon monoxide produces hypoxia hypoxic histotoxic anemic segment just think over it yes anemic why because the affinity of carbon monoxide to bind to hemoglobin is almost 200 times more than oxygen so it will bind to hemoglobin and uh, replace oxygen from there creating hypoxia that will obviously be anemic hypoxia induction agent of choice for children halothane isoflurane sevoflurane desflurane of course sevoflurane smoothest induction inhalation agent which can be given in cardiac patient isoflurane desflurane halothane and fluorine isoflurane inhalational agent of choice for shock desflurane isoflurane halothane sevoflurane for shock desflurane more than 6% because more than 6% it stimulates sympathetic system inhalation agent of choice for day care surgery desflurane isoflurane halothane sevoflurane now one thing that should come to your mind is fastest induction and recovery is with desflurane so obviously desflurane should, should be the inhalation agent of choice for day care surgery however the agent is sevoflurane why one is the cost very important factor is the cost cost of effective desflurane i told you compared to sevoflurane is three times mac is six percent mac is two percent means three times more consumption so effective cost of one liter of sevoflurane i told you maybe around thirty five thousand that of desflurane will be around one lakh rupees then if we are giving in higher concentration obviously environmental hazard will also be more pollution will be more and the difference in recovery is hardly two minutes so for two minutes difference in recovery we can't increase the cost we cannot increase the side effect because induction of desflurane is also irritating so considering all these factors together age inhalation agent of choice for daycare surgery sevoflurane in spite of having little higher uh, or little delayed recovery as compared to desflurane and that's all thank you very much if you have any query you can put on our eGurkul uh, Facebook. Definitely, we'll try to help as early as possible. Thank you very much.